You are watching Co-op for Two, broadcasting live from Champaign, Illinois, Monday night, August 22nd, early Tuesday morning, around 1 a.m., 2022. And we're getting ready to play the L.A. Noir play-by-mail game uh, by Murders by Mail. This is turn seven. We've previously played the Sherlock Holmes uh, case two hours ago, and we had a lengthy start to that one where we just chatted a bit, but I think we'll probably get into this one more quickly. Anything new from the chat in the last 15 minutes between streams? I see we've got uh, Pass to Death is back to join us for the L.A. Noir case. Jonathan was recommending a video game, or not recommending it, um, but talking about a new computer game. I was just looking at this case. I think it's actually interesting that for a long time, the L.A. Noir case was much more compelling and intriguing and involving emotionally than the Sherlock Holmes case. But then, and we, but it feels like we've solved the, the L.A. Noir case now and we're sort of running in place. And slowly, the tides are turning a little bit. Now I'm thinking that the Sherlock Holmes case is starting to become a little more uh, appealing because this case seems to be wrapped up and we've sort of, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel now for these L.A. Noir clues. Whereas the Sherlock's home, Sherlock Holmes case is heating up a little bit in terms of presenting us with a challenge. So I don't know if you guys feel the same thing, but was looking at the clues we have here uh, in Los Angeles, and I really thought in the previous session that Jonathan's insight into who to ask to find Poppy's boyfriend was going to yield fruit, and it didn't. We found a way to find another one of Poppy's co-workers the trumpet player, Arlo Skelly, but when we visited him, he just told us the same thing everyone else tells us, that she's a bad person and that she's got a young Mexican boyfriend, Julio. The only thing he told us is that she was ma previously married. I think that might be new information for us. Um, so if you'll remember, if we want to refresh our memory where we sent people last time, we sent Naomi, the con artist socialite, to talk to the mother. I'm hoping that the mother will give us a lead now on the ex-husband of Poppy, and that that's a way for us to chase down these Poppy leads. Oh, sorry, we sent Bill Knight there. He's good at spotting liars, and he's the one that Rose, the mother, hired. So it makes sense. And then we sent Naomi to the LA Times, Remember, the LA Times did the story on Violet, who was killed, so we hope that um, they might have some extra information and maybe even long shot, but maybe even tell us about what neighbor's house we might go to see if they saw anything. And then, for lack of a better place, we sent Bev Parker to one of our informants, the cab depot, to see if maybe we could spot someone leaving Violet's house. Maybe someone took a cab there. Those seem pretty reasonable clues, but if those don't yield any fruit, I'm not sure where to go next. It did remind me, however, that we've been actually hitting the informants, we're calling them informants, but the expert contacts of the L.A. Noir case quite a bit. Today we went to two... We went to the L.A. cab. Why did we not mark down M24 is where Naomi went? Here, we didn't write that down. Naomi's yellow. So we've been hitting a lot of these expert contacts in the L.A. case, but not so much in the Sherlock Holmes case. In our Sherlock Holmes session, we were sort of running out of places to go. We might want to consider going to one of the experts. Jonathan says, talking about my claim that the cases are sort of flipping in interest a little bit, 
John says, thematically, I was expecting to find more dark secrets about our victim in this case. So far, not so much. Maybe there are still twists. Uh, there may be some irony where we are hired to solve the case on behalf of the victim, but by the end, maybe have more mixed feelings about the victim, possibly. I don't think the mother is going to be all that happy if we find that the sister killed the sister. We don't have a picture of Poppy um, that's given, but just to remind you of who we're working for, here's Violet that was killed pretty brutally, poisoned, smashed in the head. This is who we are trying to solve, let her to bring her justice, and we think it's the sister. All right, anything else to talk about before we open this up? We haven't really, we've, it's, we, the game has given us over the top reason to dislike the sister that we think poisoned her. It hasn't given us that much background about Violet herself. That seems like a little bit of a missed opportunity. Normally in these film noirs, we want to learn more about how this Violet had a heart of gold and motivate our search for her murderer a little bit more. We've sort of been running in place for a while. She she was, Anna reminds us, she was dead when she was smashed in the head, so really she died by poison, not so brutal. Well, yes and no. That poison would have been making her sick for a long time. Her hair was falling out. She's an actress, so she must have been very scared about that. And it's not fun to have some sickness that you don't know what's causing it. So you're right. Maybe not a brutal head being smashed in scene of death, but prolonged, painful death, probably. All right. Let's remind ourselves where we sent people, uh, which I already went over. Okay. So Bill McKnight goes to the mother's house. Naomi's going to the LA Times, and Bev is stopping off at the taxi cab company. If this is the first video you're watching in this series, you should leave now and watch session one, two, three, four, five, six, till you get up to today. And then please, if you're watching this later and not joining us live, leave some comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you can't share them with us live. And if you are watching these live, this is the perfect video of all the videos. These are the videos that you should feel free to just say something, <laughs> to speak up and say, hello, I'm watching, I'm hating these play-by-mails, I'm liking the play-by-mails. I mean, there's no reason not to say hello. All right, let's read what Bev says in her reply. Let's do it this way. Went to M8 like you asked. I wave hi to some of the grease monkeys in the garage, then find my way to the dispatch office. Sean Terry is kicking back in his chair, making his tiny chicken scratch notes on a taxi logbook. Hey, Terry, I rap on the door. What's shaking? Bev! He stands on his one good foot the other one got left behind in Guadalcanal and hops over for a hug. This business or pleasure? Business today, I wink. I'm on the hoof for Will Knight, the private dick. Sure, I know him. Terry flops back into his chair. What's the lay? I give him a quick rundown of the York murder, who we're interested in, and some places they might have been. Mostly, we wondered if you could look at that night, May 10th, see if there's any unusual call traffic, cab traffic. He frowns and rubs his neck. Well, sure, babe, I can look, but I gotta say, Hollywood actors, a mobster, a DA, those ain't exactly taxi-taking folks. Usually they got their own cars or private drivers. It's a good point. Still, could you check? Of course. I'll give it a slant. Hmm, 10th was a Monday, right? A lot less going on than the weekend. Won't take long. Ten minutes later, and he turns back with a sigh. I'm afraid you made the trip for biscuits, Bev. Nothing with any of those names, and we got exactly zero hacks around the girl's house. Matter of fact, we got zero cabs up Laurel Canyon Road at night. Like I said, kind of the wrong neighborhood for taxis. Okay, Tara, thanks for checking. Sure, you know, for the actor types, you might want to check over at Interurban Coach. 
They got contracts with most of the major studios. That's interesting. Okay, this is important here. Zero hacks around that ha the girl's house. So, no one took a cab to her house. Interesting. Wrong neighborhood. And then he says, check interurban coach. Hmm. They got contracts with most of the major studios. Okay. So let's make a note of that. So well, this is Bev at cab. So they said no cabs near house. They said no cabs from suspects, right? Like we gave him the name of the DA, the other guy that was on our suspect list. No one there, but he does say check inter urban. Coach or movie, movie studio drivers. All right, let's look up into Urban Coach and see if we can't get an address. Maybe we'll go there. Interurban coach is M76. Got that from the directory. Now that's not one of our contacts, is it? No, okay. All right, so that's the only way we could have found that is talking to this guy. Travel and transportation into urban coach. That's where it, that's the yellow pages listing there under. Um, the only thing about that is that we don't suspect it's movie theater people. We don't suspect it's movie company people. We think it's the sister operating maybe with the with her boyfriend. I wonder if her boyfriend isn't a driver for interurban coach. Hmm. Uh I'm reading it as interurban coach is like a private driving service for the stars. So they might have separate records for drives to Canyon Road. Yes, that's how I was reading reading it too. Driver for the stars or driver on hire by the movie the movie company. So the movie producers and stars would use their cabs and they would have independent records about drives to Canyon Road, including Violet herself probably were, was driven around by such drivers. My only point was that if we think the sister did it, the sister doesn't work for the studio. She does now. Now the studio has some interest in her, but she didn't at the time of the murder. Well, Anna says the movie studio is putting Poppy up in a hotel. Maybe they gave her a car as well. That's, that's certainly possible now, but that would be after the murder. They wouldn't have been driving her around before the murder unless she was seeing a producer movie person before the murder, but she's got a Mexican boyfriend before the murder. So that doesn't sound they, a young Mexican kid. So I don't think Poppy is driving around in a car before the murder. That's the only thing that's making me think it's less likely to yield fruit than otherwise, but maybe someone else is involved in this case. All right, let's, read what Bill McKnight has discovered. 
He's gone to the mother's house. I'm this. I'm interested to read this just emotionally, psychologically. Rose Fitzgibbon's home. We're finally talking to the mother. We've learned a lot. Let's see what conversation we have. Rose Fitzgibbon lived in a pleasant suburban house up north of Verdugo. It was nice, nicer than you might expect for a single older lady, but Violet probably footed the bill. She recognized me at the door, and a minute later we were sitting in her parlor. Would you like some tea, or... No, ma'am, thank you, I said. I'm sorry for coming by unannounced, but I was hoping to know a little bit more about Violet's uh, romantic history. Men she knew. She must have had men clamoring for her attention. Did she ever tell you about them? Rose looked tentative, but proud. She did. We were still very close in that way. I'm sure she would have outgrown it someday, like her sister, but she hadn't yet. We were still very close. She would have outgrown it like her sister. So her sister is cruel. Her sister is also distant from the mother. I understand. We know she dated Joe Stanton, the actor. He's a bit of a reputation. Would she have told you if he was ever rough with her? She would have. But he wasn't. I met him, and Joe was like a puppy when they were together. His rough and tumble side was just when he went out with his friends and drank. Boys will be boys and all that. Still, they were just too different, but they were still friendly. We don't suspect Joe Stanton at all. There is also a story about her seeing Carl Kenner, the deputy district attorney. He definitely had a violent nature, got into a fight with a photographer. She nodded. Yeah, but that was over before it began. Violet learned he was married, you see, and she didn't want any part of that. I was very proud of her. Can you think of any other names? I opened up my hands. An old boyfriend, someone before she got famous, high school sweetheart, maybe? Well, there's George Lawrence, she said, like I'd recognize the name. But he died in the war. I'm sorry, Mr. Knight. Believe me, if I had any other names, if I suspected anyone, I'd tell you. All right, well, we were hoping to talk to her about Poppy, but the game had different ideas. All right, so Bill McKnight. Talking to Rose. Given. She mentioned George Warren. What does she say about George Warren? She said he's an old boyfriend. Old boyfriend died in war. George Lawrence, an old boyfriend who died in the war. Hmm. Uh, we could get some information about him at some... Um, expert, you know, the records, Hall of Records. I'm not sure what we would think the connection would be, although you could imagine we might find that he was originally Poppy's boyfriend and Violet stole him, and that's another reason for Poppy to dislike her sister. But for now, the relevance of some dead old boyfriend is a big question mark. Like, why would that be relevant to our case? But we'll keep our ears open if someone mentions George Warrens. Anna says, it's a bit frustrating. We're talking to everyone, trying to get information on the sister. And the game is still talking as if we think someone beat her up. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a bit of a difficulty in designing these games. But yeah, we're like chasing down the people who were violent, but we've already figured out she didn't die of violence, so it's a little weird for us. But just imagine he's covering all the bases, covering all the bases. All right, let's read what happens at the newspaper. Naomi, one of my favorite characters in this game, 
Naomi, the socialite. The socialite con artist. Will, I found Eli Larson. Sorry. Eli Harson sitting at his desk at the Times bullpen. Well, well, the lovely Miss Naomi Poe, he said. Dare I ask if this is business or pleasure? We're working the York murder, Darwin, I said. Got any scuttlebutt you could share? He raised an eyebrow. Behind his big glasses, he looked like a confused owl. The York case, why are you? Grieving mother, insensitive police, terrible loss. I waved my hand, can't believe it myself. Saw Hart's Tempest four times. She was a lovely girl. He nodded. She was, but I'm afraid everything I know is in the paper and everything. I perched my hip on his desk. Come on, Eli. You're a sharp fellow. There must be something interesting that didn't make the cut for old time's sake. He swallowed hard. Ah, maybe. Maybe for new time's sake. I winked. Maybe. Okay, he blushed. We did drop one line. Last person to see her alive was a delivery boy from Stoddard's. Around eight last night. Sounds like she ordered in about once a week. Hmm, now that is interesting. Thank you, sweet Eli. I slipped off the desk and gave him a peck on the cheek. That'll hold him for a few months at least. <laughs> okay. So... The last person to see her was a delivery boy from Stoddard's. Is that going to be a young Mexican delivery boy named Julio? I wonder. All right, well, that could be a pretty big lead. I mean, anytime you've got the last person to see the victim, that's a big deal. Okay, so Naomi came through, and boy, it sounds like she was the right person to send here, huh? Like, I wonder, what if he wouldn't tell anyone but Naomi? Okay, so delivery boy from Stoddard's department store. Last night, at around 8 p.m., this will be the night of her murder, the last person to see her, that they know of. I wonder if we found Julio. Uh, Anna says, at last, maybe now we find who the poison food. Yes, that's a very good point. Good, 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 good. Let me write that down here. I didn't write down that this guy says she had delivery once a week. So that would make a lot of sense now that you could poison her by poison by because she's getting her food delivered once every week you get the poison and the de delivery person can access poison and poison her food every week that's great i think we've wrapped up this case i think it's going to be julio working with her at stoddard's okay all right uh all right so those are our three clues all useless except for that last one from Naomi, which was a jackpot, and I think we might have found Julio. All right, so let's look up Stoddard's, and let's see if we can't find that the department store. Must not be a department store. Must be a grocery store. Let's see, Stoddard's. Wicker store, no. Pharmacy, no. Stoddard's, it's an ad. Visit Stoddard's where Hollywood Eats open all night, 24 hour delivery, including Laurel Canyon. That's where we are in Laurel Canyon. Okay. 
Call in age 22. All right. So, who are we going to send to Stoddard? That seems like our first, our most important decision. And then Jonathan says it might be worth getting the interurban coach records in case. I do think we might. We don't have a. We don't have a lot of places to go, so I think it makes sense to follow down that lead. Lead about interurban coach, but. Surely we're sending someone to Stoddard's. Now the only question is whether we send Naomi or we send Bill McKnight. I think I'm inclined to send Bill McKnight. First of all, it's a little dangerous if it is Julio that works there. He's a little dangerous. He can spot lies better, and he's got a gun if he needs to, and he can maybe pressure the store owner. I don't think Naomi's going to have much luck pressuring the store owner. It's not a store. It's a restaurant. And it says send Bill McKnight. So, yeah, okay. I think we send Bill McKnight. We can always change this with these beautiful friction erasable gel Pens. Jonathan Warner says, I also sort of like the idea of sending Bev in to just barge in there and grab the delivery boy. <laughs> yeah, Bev doesn't mess around either. It always is a little bit uh, compelling to send the person who, who chased down that lead in the first place. That would be Naomi. But I do think... Bill McKnight is probably better for the job. All right, who are we going to send to interurban coaches? That should be Naomi, right? She could sort of talk the guy into giving her the records. I don't want to send Bev to interurban. It's like Bev went to the cabbies. The interurban are going to be the stuck-up people working for the stars. So that's either has to be Bill McKnight or Naomi. All right, let's send Naomi to interurban. That's M76. Interurban coach. So that leaves Bev. Where are places we still want to go? So if you look at our experts, we've got a cop. That should be Bill McKnight. We've got a small-time crook who knows all the crooks. I'm inclined not to go to one of these experts. We've been to too many of them too recently. They feel like they might be hints. So... Where do we still want to go? We've got the Delray party that we don't think anyone's involved in. We've got George, uh, the old boyfriend. Um, we could go to the mobster restaurant. I can't remember if we've already been there yet. We could go to that. We could visit the ADA's wife. I don't, well, it's kind of a fun idea to send Bev there. Just because that guy is not going to like to see Bev, but I don't think Bev's going to have much patience for him either. Um, 
Anna was saying, where would you buy the poison? Remember, that was one of my brilliant insights, that she just stole the poison from her apartment building. Remember, that was when we saw the gardener spraying insecticide. So one of the nice things was that she didn't have to buy the poison or go to the gardening store. She just lifted it from her apartment building. Jonathan says, was Bev in the service as a medic or mechanic? Maybe she could find about George from an army source. I don't want to send her to one of the experts. There is an office of records that I think maybe we could discover about George from, but I don't want to go to another one of our experts. I feel like we're just going to a lot of those early, and that feels like cheating. Um... I'm kind of tempted to send her to the ADA just to see how this stuck-up ADA reacts poorly. Or the, maybe the ex-wife, remember, the ADA. Um, Jonathan was asking, are there any Army places in the directory? Right, let's just look. So our expert that might have Army information would be the Hall of Records. Peek her interests, see what she'll find. Okay, but... If we look in the directory, let's see if there's anything government stuff, government offices. We've got all the different police departments, motor vehicle department. Order and Power, Hall of Records, Fire Department, District Attorney, Building Department. So no Army records. Let's see if there's a separate military place. Used cars. We know she was a singer. I don't see any military places, banks and finances. Surprising that there aren't any military organizations for us to find. We, there is a Mexican newspaper. Huh. That's interesting. We have enough information. To use that? What's the likelihood that a, just because it's a Mexican kid that the Mexican newspaper would have any information on him? Forest Lawn Memorial Park, that could be a military park. We're sort of assuming that daughter delivery guy is going to be Julio. And there's Del Rey, that's where they had to party. Uh, any military in the... We could also deduce the military cemetery. I skipped over cemetery. Let's see. Cemetery. Beth Israel, Evergreen, Hollywood, Inglewood Park, New Cavalry. 
Inglewood Park Cemetery. There's no reason to think that those are military cemeteries, is there? Here's Sutter's again. We could check a used car store to see if uh, maybe Violet, maybe Poppy bought a used car recently. We've got this side story about someone starting fires. We could try to visit the Port of Los Angeles to hear about this side story in case it's relevant to us. Just looking through these other newspapers, something that jumps out at us. Um, I'm not sure it's even relevant to try and find George, but while trying to just spitball, we could try to find her in George's old high school. Was it mentioned before? Was her high school mentioned before? Well, let me try to look up her the name of Lawrence and see if he's in the paper, a relative, if we wanted to follow that chase that down, although we have no reason to think that this is anything related to our case. So there's no Lawrence in the paper. For what that's worth. Well, the leads that we feel we should be tracing, chasing down eventually are the ADA, district attorney, the clubs where the people were seen fighting and talking about Viola. The only question we have is where to send Bev. Okay. So we know that at the night of the murder, Joe Stanton and his driver says they were at the Del Rey Club. So we could go, we could send Bev there just for the fun of it to nail down that and prove that alibi. Um, even though we don't suspect that. The Brown Derby was 838. Did we go there yet? That was the club where the gangsters were talking, where we were told that our guy asked out asked out violent and she turned it in. Okay, we didn't go there either. So we've got two clubs to go that we haven't been to yet. Let's make a note. 
places of interest. The Delray Club, the Brown Derby Club, We've got our Mexican paper, newspaper. We could try a shot in the dark, check there. We've got the ADA and or his wife. I wonder if we could talk to his wife again. We don't think they're involved, but um, We could try going to the port with the fires for the hell of it. Not many places to go at this point. We could check the records. It could give us Poppy's husband's name as well. Yeah. The records person is a friend of Bill McKnight's. All of records. Going to Hall can be a chore, but Faye makes it a little brighter. Pique her interest and she'll help find what you need. Well, okay. That might work. Bev might work there if we want to go to another expert. I just, uh, I'm hesitant to go to all these experts. I think I'd rather send Bev out. And it says, yes, all those other weeds were for the men in Violet's life, and we don't think they're involved. They aren't too interesting. I I mean, I agree. I do agree with you there. Are there any um, just fun places that we want to send Bev for the hell of it? What about the port? Where the fires were. Can we go to those places just to see if that's a side story that we might be interested in? There are no entries for ports. Let's look at that as a, as a potential side story. Container fire at the Port of Los Angeles. Cargo terminal 12 became dislodged, fell to the ground, causing the material inside to catch fire. Contents unknown. Damaged external markings and the harbor master's office has not yet identified the origin of the container. The second container might be missing. Since we're wrapping up this main case, I'm sort of curious if there's a side case we could get our teeth into. And then we've got Another L.A. Fireberg sets small blazes in four different town, downtown flop houses within an hour earlier today. If we can't think of a better place, I think we should send Bev not to one of our experts, but someplace that's a long shot. Either the Mexican uh, newspaper or our ADA. I'm sort of curious just to send her the ADA just to hear her spar with him. Or send her to one of the clubs. She could, maybe something else was overheard there. Maybe the sister's involved somehow.
Daughters. I'm going to do the restaurants. Okay. Uh, Jonathan says, I'm okay with sending her one of the side cases if you can. Anna says, okay, the ADA would be interesting as flavor. Okay. I can't find a place to send. I can't find a way to get into the side case here. Port of Los Angeles, Cargo Terminal 12, Harbor Master. And there's all the docks, but I don't see a way to get more. In I don't see a way to make contact with that. We've got shipping and freight, but no ports. So I think let's send her to the ADA. Is one of the suspects. You can't go into court and say that you didn't chase down the leads. I think for flavor, I think that's a good idea. All right, so let's remind ourselves what the what the how that person is described carl kenner the ada kenner's wife nearly left him so actually if we could talk to the wife i'd prefer so the ada is carl kenner now we've got a dress for the ada but what about Kenner's house where we could talk to his wife directly? We've got C Kenner, E52, and G Kenner, E52. So it looks like the husband and wife live in the same place, but maybe have their own separate entrances, like they're, they're living separate. All right, so let's go to the Kenner house, E52. And we're going to send Bev there for fun. Maybe she can talk to the wife. Okay, remember, we don't expect to get a good information, but we want it for flavor. We're going to have to go there eventually. I think it makes sense. Okay. So we've got our locations, let's put them in. Okay, so Bill McKnight is going to age 22 at the Stoddards. Hopefully he can catch the delivery guy and hopefully it's Julio. Naomi is going to M76. She's going to Interurban Coach. She's hoping she can talk some records, some information out of one of the drivers. And then Bev is going to the Kenner's house and she's going to give this ADA, put him in his place. And there we go. All right. So this was 822. All right. I like those choices. Let's um, mark them down. So Bill Knight went to age 22. All right, up there, near where she lives. I see, she ordered from a nearby place. That makes sense. Interurban Coach is where Naomi goes. They're at M76. Okay. Middle of our map. And then Bev went to the ADA's house at E52. It's right there. Okay. Reasonable one great lead. The delivery guy. I feel like that's going to wrap this whole case up. And um, then two sort of throwaway leads, although the interurban coach could lead to something. All right. Well, this was a shorter session as expected. Anything else we need to talk about? 
before we sign off today, and then maybe we'll meet up again Wednesday and do a cold case game. Anyone else have anything else to say? If the delivery driver is Julio, boy, is this case going to be wrapped up. You almost have to hope that it's not Julio. That we still have to search for Julio. Let's think about it this way. If we believe this game that the criminal is actively trying to thwart us, we should be worried for Julio's life. Someone has already warned us that she chews up and spits out boyfriends. She does have an ex-husband. What if the ex-husband is this guy, George Lawrence, and she poisoned him, too? We might want to go to the Hall of Records to find uh, Poppy Fitzgibbon's ex-husband soon. But if the delivery boy is Julio, boy, is that going to lock it up? But she might be trying to kill off Julio before we can get to him. So it wouldn't be crazy if he's like, hasn't showed up for work in a couple days. She doesn't mess around. Well, Jonathan says, said Warrens died in the war. So I assume he died overseas. Yeah. But it, it didn't say he died in the war. The mother said she thought he died in the war. So we don't know for sure. But yes, the mother thinks he died in the war. And the mother says that the sister is not very friendly. If we don't find Julio, then I think we start looking for Poppy's... Uh, ex-husband. In fact, regardless of what we find, I do want to talk to Poppy's ex-husband. I mean, everyone so far has said Poppy's pretty bad person, so I don't expect anyone to say anything better, but maybe he'll be like, yeah, it was weird. I got very sick <laughs> one day. I wonder if we could find the ports of LA somewhere on the map. Or maybe at least confirm that they're off the map. All right. Anything more to talk about? Anyone want to share some of their life with us? Anna and Jonathan, you know, I'm not very good at asking about people. Do Anna, Jonathan, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Maybe you want to save that for another stream? Anyone else in the channel who can be persuaded to say hello? Get your theories in. Are we going to find Julio alive and well? John says, I suspect the records visit will focus more on Violet than Poppy. Yeah, that's what worries me too. It's, we were talking before in the Sherlock Holmes stream about missed opportunities for these murders by mail. But one of the missed opportunities is, you know, when you play the Sherlock Holmes games and you want to have certain information only available if the person has done something first, you have these gates that say like, did you have a circle G? And then it sort of leaks information. They could though, they could have in this case, known when we got information on Poppy, and then when we go to a place, it could focus on that paragraph rather than that paragraph. Like when we talked to the mother, we were saying like, what were the other boyfriends? The game could know that we've already zeroed in on Poppy and then add questions about Poppy to those dialogues and remove other questions. So it is a little bit of a shame that they're not doing that, that they're not taking advantage of knowing what places we've already been and what information we might want to be asking about. Like, why aren't we asking everyone about Julio? Like, we would ask the mother, hey, did uh, Poppy ever mention a guy named Julio? Stuff like that.
All right, well, if there's nothing else, then we'll sign off. All right, thanks for joining me as always. I'll see you again in a couple days, and we'll try one of these cold case games, and hopefully we'll get our replies for this game early next week. We're going to play them as soon as they arrive. That's the best way to keep the turnaround quick. All right. See you next time.